This is the story of one boy's desperate attempt to be part of a perfect family and the incredible lengths he'll go to to make it happen. From 1994, this is The Paper Boy. I'm De Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. This is 12-year-old Johnny McFarley and he's a paper boy. It's worth pointing out at this point that while in the UK, paper boys actually have to put the newspapers through letterboxes, American ones just chuck them from their bikes in the vague direction of the houses. Johnny does, however, like to add a personal touch. Uh, I also have something. <laughs> Johnny's nemesis is neighbourhood tart Brenda, who has to climb a ladder to get in and out of her house. Cut to Boston, where we meet Melissa. She's a teacher at an inner city school. This summer, I will behave. Thank you, Yuri. Yeah, cheers, Harry. Melissa, you really know how to work with the kids. Oh, my kids are going to make it. Statistically, that's highly unlikely. But moving on. Later at home, Melissa's daughter, Cammie, takes a call from Melissa's friend, Diana, from back home. And it sounds like bad news. Oh, no. So Melissa and Cammie head home. It turns out that the woman Johnny suffocated was Melissa's mum. The doctor said she had a weak heart. Oh, that explains it then. Where should I put these? Melissa's like, who are you? I'm Johnny McFarley. I live right next door to you. Always nice to meet a friendly neighbour. I feel like I know you already. Excuse me? Yeah, more on that later. While Johnny goes outside and makes friends with Cammie, Melissa is looking through her mum's photo albums. I wonder where the pictures from last summer are. I wonder. The next day, when Melissa's taking her mum's clothes to the coroner, Johnny lets himself into her house. He steals her hairbrush and plants a baby monitor and whatever this thing is, so now he can listen to everything Melissa says while brushing his hair with her hairbrush. The next day, it's Melissa's mum's funeral. Why is Johnny dressed for it? She was my friend. Okay. Melissa tells Johnny he can ride in the limo with her and Cammie, and on the way there, Johnny tells Melissa that last year, his mum died. So now he lives with his dad, who's too obsessed with golf to look after him. I'm sorry. I can take care of myself. At the funeral, Johnny kisses Melissa's mum's dead body, then takes Cammie downstairs and tells her how comfortable coffins are. I fell asleep in one of these. All right. Meanwhile, upstairs, Melissa bumps into her old friend Brian from school. Also in attendance is weird old lady Mrs. Rosemont. It's a sin for a soul to be taken before their time. When they get home, Melissa is really impressed that Johnny has cleaned her kitchen. I did it just for you. All right. Do you like hot dogs? Yes, ma'am. Well, how would you like to come over tomorrow night for dinner? Okay. So that's happening. When Johnny gets home, he watches Melissa through a window with his telescope. <laughs> the next day, Melissa gets a call from Brian asking her out for dinner. She knows Johnny's coming over for hot dogs, but she can't imagine he'll mind too much. <laughs> Later at the barbecue, Johnny is filming Cammie making the hot dogs. Come and get it! Wow, that looks great! You look beautiful. Almost as if she's about to go out on a date. And oh no, what's Brenda doing here? Brenda's babysitting. But you invited me to dinner. Brian invited me. No! It was supposed to be us, the family! So that was a bit weird. When Johnny gets home and sees Melissa leaving with Brian, he takes it out on his bed. <laughs> Brian's taken Melissa out for dinner on this boat, and the date's going really well, because Brian's hilarious. So is this yours? No, but I have one just like it, though. Where is it? It's in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny feels bad about smashing that plate earlier, so types up a note and goes round to Melissa's house to deliver it. But hang on, what's going on here? Brenda's boyfriend leaves, so she comes outside and calls Johnny a fungus. Ooh. Now, Johnny may be a fungus, but at least he's got something new in his wank bank. Is that a fact? Yeah, it is, actually. When Melissa gets home, she asks Brenda how her evening was. She's like, yeah, all good apart from that weird kid next door, knocking one out while he was spying on me with my boyfriend. And oh no, Johnny's heard all of this through the baby monitor. Shut up, you'll ruin everything. The next day, Johnny tries again to deliver the note to Melissa, this time with some flowers. But oh no! Did you get your rocks off spying on me? When he gets to Melissa's... You weren't snooping around the house last night, were you, Johnny? Brenda's a liar. I didn't say anything about Brenda. 
Uh, oops. Later that night, Johnny gets his revenge on Brenda by removing the screws and the ladder she uses to get in and out of her house. <laughs> the next day, he tells Melissa about Brenda's accident. She's going to be a paraplegic from now on. Bye then. Later when Melissa's out, Johnny lets himself into her house and does the usual. Smells her underwear, smells her perfume, puts her perfume on her underwear and smells it again. Okay. But oh no, she's home. Luckily, Johnny makes it out undetected. The next morning at 6am... <laughs> Am I doing a good job? Melissa's like, that's enough now, Johnny. Go home and stop doing things for me. So Johnny runs home and thinks about what he's done. God hates stupid children. Later, he decides to do some 90s photoshopping. But oh no. What are you doing in here? Are those pictures of me and my mom? Did you steal them? Yes. He's like, let's not worry about that. I've got some errands to run. You can come with me. So that's happening. The first stop is Mrs. Rosemont's house. Stay away from that boy. He's like, don't listen to her, Cammy. She's a witch. Later that day, Melissa hears some worrying conversation coming from Cammy's room. Well, go ahead, touch it. Just hold it in your hand. What are you doing? Johnny bought him at the mall. Thank God it was just a tortoise or turtle or terrapin, whatever this is. I won't lose any sleep over that, but if you want to let me know what that thing is in the comments, please do. Thanks. Melissa's like, go home, Johnny. It's Cammy's bedtime. And he's like, I just like spending time with my family. But Melissa's like, we're not your family. You already have a family. Your father, I'm sure he loves you very much. No, he doesn't. Okay, bye then. When he gets home after a quick peer through the telescope at Melissa, he goes online and orders presents for her and Cammy. He buys Cammy a doll and Melissa some jewellery. Melissa's like, thanks, Johnny, that's really kind. I'd do anything to make you happy. What's all the excitement? Oh, no, it's Brian, who's wearing a tank top with nothing underneath. So Johnny leaves. Brian's like, OK, Melissa, that kid wants you. And she's like, whatever, Brian, he's 12. Why don't we forget Loverboy for a few minutes? Let me take you and Cammy out for some pizza, what do you say? So Johnny decides to invite himself along. Not tonight, slugger. Don't call me that. Shouldn't you be out with some buddies your own age playing ball or something? I don't really like playing ball. Sorry, Johnny. Bye, Johnny. I'm sorry for you, Brian. Uh-oh. So as he can't come with them, he follows them on his bike and watches them through the window. Later that night... What's the mark of Cain, Mommy? The old witch, Mrs. Rosemont. She said Johnny had it. Melissa's like, whatever, that's all nonsense. The next day, Melissa and Cammy bump into Mrs. Rosemont at the grocery store. And oh, look, for plot purposes, Mrs. Rosemont has asthma. <laughs> Melissa's like, what's all this about Johnny? He's evil. You'll see. When they get home from the store. What are you doing here? Making apple pie. How dare you come into my house when I'm not here? How did you get in here? I have a key. Your mother gave it to me so that when it rained, I could deliver the paper inside. Yeah, right. Go home, Johnny. Go home. When Johnny gets home, he's watching the video he made of Cammy making the hot dogs and talks to it while he eats. Meanwhile, Melissa has come over to speak to Johnny's dad about what he's been up to. He's like, who's Johnny? Oh, him. Yeah, he's a creepy little bastard, isn't he? Yep. To be honest, I'm more interested in golf. You need to take responsibility for your son. He's like, yeah, OK. So he decides to give Johnny a gift. And oh, look, it's a set of golf clubs. Look at this putter. Hmm? How impressive. Johnny's like, that's nice, Dad, but I'm not interested in golf. <laughs> and yes, you did hear that. And no, it wasn't something I added. They've actually put in the sound of someone driving a golf ball. In case you missed it. Unbelievable. Anyway, he's dead. So while Johnny digs a grave for him in the basement, he stores his body in the freezer. Later that night, Johnny's spying on Melissa through his telescope again. But hang on, what's this? Yeah, no idea. Anyway, the next day, Melissa goes round to see Mrs. Rosemont. She's like, OK, it seems you may have been right about Johnny. And she's like, yeah, since his mum died, there's been no one to knock him into shape. Are you saying she beat him? Yes, 
Mrs. Rose wants like, yeah, she was found at the bottom of the stairs with a broken neck and I reckon Johnny did it. So as his mum's dead and his dad seems to have disappeared, Melissa's going to call social services and get Johnny put in a foster home. She tells Brian all about this over the phone. But oh no, Johnny can hear her telling him all about the plan to get him fostered over the baby monitor. Mrs. Rosemont has agreed to make a statement. Needless to say, Johnny doesn't like the sound of this plan. Leave my family alone! Okay... I wonder if you can guess what he's got planned for today. That's right, he's off to Mrs. Rosemont's house. Somehow he just walks on in, then grabs her dog and confronts her. Good evening, Mrs. Rosemont. <gasps> now... Johnny makes it look like he's put a dog in this pillowcase, but to be clear, he has not. He's fed the dog in another room and put a rack of ribs in the pillowcase to make it look like the dog. I'm telling you this now because if you don't know that, the next scene is very disturbing. <laughs> so she's dead and the dog's fine. Good. Good. So now it's time to deal with Brian. Shouldn't you be out playing ball? Hey! To make it look like an accident, Johnny covers the boatyard in petrol and sets fire to it with a flare. Meanwhile, Melissa has gone to Mrs. Rosemont's house and found her dead. Then her phone rings. H Hello? I guess your meeting's over, huh? She then hears Cammy's voice in the background, so runs round to his house. Where is she? But it wasn't Cammy, it was the barbecue video that Johnny talks to. Then Melissa finds evidence of the full extent of Johnny's obsession, his stalker collage, and the baby monitor. Johnny can't have that, so... Fuck! And oh look, there's his dad's body. Cammy sees Melissa's car outside Johnny's house and comes running over. And this is enough to distract Johnny while Melissa escapes out the window. But oh no, here comes Johnny with a pickaxe. And oh no, Melissa has fallen over. It's clearly a pretty poorly made pickaxe because as soon as it goes into the ground, the handle comes off. He'd have been better off using his new putter. Then there's this fight. <laughs> the police arrive and Johnny tells them that it was Melissa who killed everyone. But who's this? That's right, Brian survived the fire and he's told the police everything. So Johnny is arrested and that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And please consider joining my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you.